Removing the old oil light bearings was a straightforward task thanks to a few sucker punches that I machined before disassembling the lathe. Four different sizes were needed to cover all of the bronze bearings on the lathe. They were all pretty firmly pressed in and I can't imagine being successful removing them with the hammer and round thing method. For convenience, I primed everything with spray can primer. The finishing coats of colour matched enamel were sprayed with a gun. I showed that process in video 5, so I'll just skim over it here. Most mechanical parts were originally painted and then cut to their final shape. The problem with restoring machines is that the process is often reversed. Typically you'll be spending untold time masking off cut surfaces and painting the unfinished areas. I hate masking, so this part is a real drag. The hand wheel is particularly fiddly, and maybe as much as an hour was spent masking. Happily though, I had a five day cricket match playing in the background to keep me entertained. This is the lever to engage and disengage the power feed. It has a blued finish. There was quite a bit of damage that I repaired with a file. Yeah, I'm not sure how a part like this gets damaged like this, but anyway. Normally I prefer to leave the original gluing in place and just sort of touch up and reinforce the existing finish by applying cold glue liquid over the top. But because of a little rust that I wanted to remove, I ended up stripping most of the original gluing off and getting back to bare metal. To give a fighting chance at a decent finish, I spent a little more time than normal prepping the part. I don't like to blue an entire part from scratch, only because the bluing always ends up patchy. The little bottles of cold blue that you buy from gun shops is not the same as the hot bluing process that would have been applied in the factory. Now, the patchiness is always disappointing, but when the part is soaked in oil, the unevenness does diminish, and once assembled on the machine, the new lever will look just fine. I think oil light bearings are pretty awesome. These little guys start out as powdered bronze, which is sintered. Sintering is a process where powdered metal is heated to the point that it softens and forms a solid, but not to the point that it liquefies and runs together smoothly. In the case of oil light, this process is controlled to create a porous bearing full of tiny holes. The holes are then impregnated with oil and in some cases that oil is intended to stay in the bearing without replenishment for the life of the machine. I try to remember to soak them overnight in the oil that I'll be using with the machine, but more typically I forget and at least try to force some oil through them like this. They are impregnated with oil at the factory, so this step isn't strictly necessary, but I feel it's best to push some of the actual oil you'll be using through the bearing. The existing gears in the apron were very worn. If you saw the first video, you can see the extent of the backlash. I decided to purchase new gears from MyFit. If I had a better setup, I would have remade the gears myself, but it just didn't make sense in this case. Despite the cost, the combination gear was a bit of a failure. Come on, MyFit. The section that passes through the bearing was more than one millimeter oversized. This isn't a case of the bearing being wrong, as I double checked the new gear against an unworn section of the original gear cluster. Without an operational lathe, I had a choice to make. Now, I'm all the way over in New Zealand, and there's no way I have the patience to post the unsatisfactory gear all the way home and wait for a replacement. Therefore, the most sensible option is to reinstall the old gear 
wait for the lathe to be operational, and then skim down the new gear so that it fits properly. But we have a saying over here that if you can't fix it with a sheep's testicle or a hammer, you'll never make the All Blacks. And on that basis, I was culturally obliged to indulge in some serious backyard machining to sort the problem out right now. <laughs> Actually, in a pinch, this is a perfectly satisfactory method for turning down an oversized part. It turned out fine. Not perfectly concentric, but for now, fit for purpose. I will however go back later and tidy it up on the lathe. I'll probably turn it down more and then sleeve it to the correct size. Here you can see I'm greasing the back of the power feed lever. I actually installed this in the wrong order the first time round. The handle has to go on after the half nut is installed on the back. The half nut slides together or apart in the V-way cut directly into the zinc aluminium alloy of the apron casting, which is obviously quite soft metal, and in this case it was pretty chewed up. I quickly took off the obvious high spots with the file and lubricated the ways with grease instead of oil, and then it all moved smoothly enough. This is the thread dial mechanism. Pretty simple. Only three parts. Or well, three, not counting the Euler mechanism. Or nut. Or washers. Anyway, the three main parts are assembled simply by the gear being pressed onto the shaft, sandwiching the body. And that's it. Apron assembled.